study of vector calculus, vector algebra, vectors. So we have finished, uh, at least we have talked in previous classes about uh, vector algebra. That means given vectors, how to add, how to subtract, how to scale or multiply, all these things. Very elementary calculus, actually not, not vector calculus. It was the usual calculus is what we did, but passed it off as, as if we are doing calculus on vectors by finding uh, tangent vector, uh, what is it called? velocity vector and acceleration vector given the position vector that's what we did but now in this part next part of the course we will truly start what is known as vector calculus calculus of vectors so let us go slowly i need to introduce a couple of concepts uh, initially it may sound as if a lot of words but these are very useful so understand carefully first i want to talk about what is a scalar field uh, you must have seen a picture like this. This is a map of Karnataka uh, with different uh, colors at different points. Colors basically indicate temperature at this point. Obviously, Bidar, Gulbarga, Raichu, uh, Gulbarga, this area, Bijapur, they are pretty hot. Gradually, here it's a bit cooler. Bangalore is very cool. Uh, Mysore, Chamaraj Nagar, you can see at various points, also western uh, region. So it's hot, humid, etc. etc. It's not humidity. This what actually what this picture is showing is uh, average annual temperature at every point. For example, at this point, maybe this is Dharwad. This Dharwad, there is a green color which corresponds to this color, which means temperature is there is between 25 and 26 maybe 25.5 degrees centigrade is the mean temperature average temperature for for the whole year if you take uh, here this is a blue one somewhere in polar so this is temperature is between 23 and 24 so 23.5 uh, whereas uh, you take some point here be there for example pretty hot um, 28 degrees centigrade average mean temperature so what I'm trying to tell you here is at various points of the map, I can associate what is the mean temperature at that point annually <laughs> means for the whole year, I find the temperature and take the average of it. You, I hope you, I'm sure you understand that. So at every point, I'm associating a number. Temperature is a number. It doesn't have a direction. It's just a number. So at every point, I'm here I'm writing color, but color means color corresponds to a number by this chart. Uh, so such a map is basically is called a scalar field. This is a temperature field. That means this in, in the region of Karnataka, it will tell me every point, every place is associated with a number. <clears throat> such a thing is called a scalar field. Scalar means real numbers. I told you this before. So every point of the region is associated a real number. So that's what this, uh, whatever description I gave you is what is coming here. A picture like this shows temperature at every point in Karnataka. It doesn't show actual temperature, it shows average annual temperature. Uh, <coughs> to every point. So that means basically every point in the region is associated with a number. So now we have to think of it like this. I take a region, every point in the region, I'm giving a number to that point. Such a thing is called a scalar field. A scalar field in a region is a function from the region to real numbers. Real numbers means here I'll use word scalar, real numbers interchangeably. There are many other scalars, but for our course, we will always say scalar means real numbers. So this is the definition of a scalar field. Scalar field in a region always is a function from the region to real numbers. Example, yeah, math. This is an example, pictorial example, but there are no mathematical expressions. How do I manipulate? How do I play with this? So here is an example. So P is X, Y, Z. In this picture, of course, I'm treating it as a x coordinate and a y coordinate you have a latitude and a longitude only two variables but in real life you could have three dimensions so point p is given by x y z i can give associate for every point p i can associate this real number what this means is give a point one zero zero then 
phi of p phi is a function is a scalar function phi of p is phi of 1 comma 0 comma 0 that means x is 1 and rest are 0 so this will be 0 actually if you take p is 1 comma 1 comma 1 then if you go to point 1 comma 1 comma 1 the answer will be 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 which is 3 so 1 phi of 1 comma 1 comma 1 is 3 phi of 1 comma 2 comma 0 1 comma 2 comma 0 1 comma 2 is 2 2 comma 0 is 0 0 comma 1 is 0. I mean 0 into 1 is 0 so these two will become 0 z is 0 so 1 so answer is 2 so 1 phi of 1 comma 2 comma 0 is 2 like this at various points I will get various real numbers this is an example of a scalar field Similarly, of course, I can have many functions. There's nothing special about x y plus y z plus z x. Here is another beautiful function. But this function we will see later. Phi, uh, phi p is root of x square plus y square plus z square. That means you give me x y z. Phi of that point p, which is given by x y z, is root of x square plus y square plus z square. For example, phi of zero is zero. Zero square plus zero square plus zero square. Phi of point P may be 1 comma 0 comma 0, then 1 square plus 0 square plus 0 square under roots and it's 1. Phi of 2 comma 0 comma 0, 2 square plus 0 square plus 0 square, so it's 2. Uh, 1 comma 2 comma 3, so then you have to say 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square under roots and whatever that horrible number is. So for every point I'm giving, actually you can see this is the distance function, distance from origin. Because that is x square plus y square plus z square. We have no distance formula. We have done in the very first lecture in this course. So x minus 0 plus y minus 0 plus z minus 0. I mean x minus 0 whole square plus y minus 0 whole square plus z minus 0 whole square will give me point distance between x, y, z and 0, 0, 0, which is what I have written here. So this is the distance function from origin. Every point I associate how far it is from origin. That's what I do. 1, 2, 0 is root of 1 square plus 2 square like this you can uh, work it out you can think what this you know, function is but i just want to tell you it's an example of a scalar field similarly of course you don't need to have three expressions you can just x y square z so this is another example of scalar function scalar fields there are many scalar functions scalar fields we will see i use both scalar function and scalar field in the interchangeable way mm, as opposed to scalar field you must have also seen a picture like this in your television weather report you keep seeing this what does this show this shows you see uh, surface wind on sunday 24th february 2000 something 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 at 5 30 pm ist that means if at that time that day if you are standing here the wind speed would have been this much there's a vector there speed wind speed means wind velocity it's a vector so Every point I give a vector means that every point I am telling you what is the wind speed, wind velocity. Uh, so picture like this shows wind, it should not be speed, it should be velocity. It's uh, sort of wrongly typed. The wind velocity at every point in India. So every point it will tell me a vector as opposed to this picture of Karnataka which gave me at every point a number. A temperature is a number whereas here it's giving me every point a velocity vector that means i have to tell you how fast it is and in which direction for example here it is very fast and it's in this direction here it's very small that's why small arrow uh, here the wind speed is very high in somewhere in tibet or wherever this is beyond uh, himalayas uh, so you can see general every point is associated with a vector such a thing is called a vector field. This is also a vector field of a region. So how do I say this? Vector field in a region is a function from the region to vectors. So each point is associated with a vector. So it's a function from this picture. It's a two-dimensional region to set of vectors. So this is two-dimension, but in general I could have three-dimension. So examples of vector fields are something like this. V of x, y, z. That means x, y, z is a point. x, y, z is the coordinates of the point. Is 2xi plus y square z, j plus xk. That means you give values for x, y, z. For example, 1, 1, 1. It's the easiest one. 
1 comma 1 comma 1 you put 1 comma 1 comma 1 so it will be 2i plus j plus k that means at point 1 comma 1 comma 1 i'll give the vector i plus j plus k at point 1 comma 0 comma 0 i'll give you 1 comma 0 comma uh, x is 1 y and z are 0 so this will become 0 this will become 2i plus k x is 1 so 2i plus k is the vector i'll give it at 1 comma 0 comma 0 like this at various points you give various values for x y z you'll get various vectors this is a vector field as opposed to scalar field where at every point i was giving a number here i'll give a vector field every point i'll give a vector and vector has three components this is the x component i component this is the j component this is the k component so here k component is x j component is y square z and i component is 2x uh, it could be anything it need not be i mean you can take any other vector field also for example this is another vector field x square i plus y square z y square i plus y square j y square z j plus z square k so you at different points x y z i get different vectors i hope it's clear so there are more examples you can write any number of examples they write any like how many are functions you can write as many vector fields you can keep right uh, what use it is this so let's play around it a bit. play around a bit uh, we don't have really so much time and energy to explain uh, full physical significance of all these things uh, if you want you check in my notes i have given uh, quite a bit of explanation uh, right now i will try to focus what is necessary what is important for examination so gradient of a scalar field scalar field is phi phi is the notation for scalar field that means i'm given a region at every point i'm given a uh, scalar function that means at every point phi of x is defined phi of t is defined so gradient of a scalar so scalar field is given to me that means something like this is given to me any one of these examples phi of t is maybe x y plus y z plus z x or whatever one of these or something else like this also is given phi is a function of x y and z remember that phi is a function of x y z i should have emphasized that by writing here phi of x comma y comma z somehow i missed that so at a point p is uh, phi is the field uh, vector scalar field and i want to define what is gradient of the scalar field so gradient is defined like this delta phi by delta x partial derivative of phi with respect to x times i cap partial derivative of phi with respect to y times j cap partial derivative of z with respect to partial derivative of phi with respect to z k cap this is gradient of phi now i don't have as i said don't have time energy to explain the physical significance of it for examination point of view you need to know if given phi how to compute grad phi so you partially you, you must know partial derivative here how to differentiate phi with respect to x that means you treat y and z as constants and differentiate phi phi is a function of x y z treat y and z as constants differentiate with respect to x put i with to that again differentiate phi with respect to y that means put x and z as constants and differentiate with respect to y and put that as coefficient of j similarly phi you differentiate with respect to z means put x and y as constant and uh, differentiate with respect to z and put it as co coefficient of k this is a vector because it's something i plus something j plus something k at every point uh, this is called gradient gradient at any point is a vector that's what i just told you this is a vector because it's coming like something i plus something j plus something k at every point so gradient of a scalar field is a vector well, the physical significance of gradient and all i don't think i have too much time to say but i'm just telling you it gives the direction in which maximum change in phi occurs what does it mean i'm tempted not to tell but at the same time i can't really not tell so let me explain this in this picture at this point let's take a boundary point uh, between green and yellow at this point temperature is changing which is the di means if you go if you sitting here say maybe this is down gere if you are sitting at down gere if you go towards shimoga temperature will change 
if you go towards uh, whatever is this side rajur or whatever uh, uh, sira whatever uh, or chitradurga then the temperature will change if you go to dharwad side temperature will change if you come to tumkur side the temperature will change if you go towards kurd uh, markera kodagu then the temperature will change if you go towards mangaluru temperature will change like that from down gere you go to any place around down gere temperature will keep changing now gradient will tell you so temperature will not change in the same way for example if you if you are already in the green place if you go towards this temperature will not change too much but if you come towards this side temperature will change dramatically means much more so there will be a direction in which change is maximum maximum change occurs that direction is the gradient that's the physical significance i won't have time energy to tell you the details of this but keep that in mind it will help you to understand so it gives so if a scalar field is given if i compute grad phi like this this is very often told grad phi gradient of phi grad phi is by definition this you differentiate phi with respect to x differentiate phi with respect to y differentiate phi with respect to z and put them as coefficients of i j k this is a new vector this vector is the direction in which phi is maximum changing maximum that's a physical interpretation uh, i'll not tell more details about it there is another interpretation for gradient this is also very beautiful and this is relevant for your examination gradient is also direction of the normal to the surface phi x y z equal to c what does this mean now think of phi uh, think of a scalar vector scalar field so let me let's go back to oh sorry why did i change this let's go back to the first picture first figure of uh, karnataka map now i want to say uh, uh, so you collect say temperature uh, temperature is 25.5 you collect all the points in karnataka which have annual mean annual temperature 25.5 degree centigrade so which means i am collecting all the phi x y is the uh, scalar field i am collecting all points x y such that phi x y is 25.5 so that is a line here actually it's a surface because here i'm taking two dimensional it's becoming a line so for example this may be that line where everything is 25.5 degrees centigrade now if this line is there you take any point on that line draw a tangent to that line and draw a normal to that that normal is gradient that's the other definition other interpretation of uh, scalar field that's what i'm writing here gradient is also the direction of the normal to the surface phi x y z equal to c that means you collect all points in the region such that phi x y z equal to c for some c you fix up some c it doesn't matter and this turns out to be a surface in three dimensional space you consider a tangent plane and draw a normal normal means a line perpendicular to this surface perpendicular to this surface you draw a line perpendicular to this surface surface where all x y z is constant that perpendicular is gradient that is another interpretation of gradient so two interpretations are given one is it's the direction in which maximum change occurs another interpretation that it is normal to the surface phi x y z equal to c so let us see few examples then maybe it will be better oh before i go to example i have some notations to you this is very important i know it's a bit abstract lot of children lot of people get uh, worried about this notation but don't worry about this notation it's just a notation it means it's just whatever you have understood gradient if you have understood this thing is not at all difficult it's just a notation it means another way of seeing this what it says another way to denote grad is via a vector operator called nabla this is pronounced as nabla it's the inverse of delta in, inverted delta so nabla is defined as the following it is del by del x into i del by del y into j del by del z into k 
This is the definition of nabla. So now there is always this problem. What is this nabla? Means what is, is it a vector? Is it a scalar? It looks like a vector because it's i something times i plus something times a plus something times k. But it is not really something because it's just del by del x. Just del by del x doesn't make any different uh, sense. Del by del x of some function makes a makes some sense. So this is not truly a vector. Is it a scalar? It's not a scalar also. This is an operator. It is like, you see, when you learn differentiation, you must have learned d by dx of sin x, d by dx of tan square x, d by dx of 1 by 1 plus x square, d by dx of something log x, some various uh, functions you wrote d by dx. What is d by dx? Is that a function? Is that a number? No, none of them. d by dx is an operator, which means d by dx operates on a function. So here, similarly, this is an operator. It's a vector operator. That means the answer to this, if you give me a function, scalar function, and if I operate nabla on that, answer will be a vector. Like d by dx of cos x is another function. So d by dx operates on a function and gives me back a function. Similarly here, nabla operates on a scalar function and gives me a vector. At the field actually, at every point I can find out the grad phi. So this is the definition. This is just a notation. Uh, grad phi is nabla phi. Nabla phi is nothing but del phi by del x times i plus del phi by del y j plus del phi by del z k. This is what I call grad phi. I'll write it as nabla phi. That's just a notation. Just don't worry at all. It's just a notation. So remember that nabla is not a uh, vector, but it's an operator. So let us actually do a few examples that might help in consolidating whatever I told you till now. Here is the question. Find gradient of phi at 1, 0, 0 if phi x, y, z is given by this. This is the distance function I told you before. Anyway, you don't need to know a geometric interpretation of all these things every time. But you must know, I mean, you must realize such things. So here is phi x, y, z is a function given. <clears throat> I want to find grad phi of this. How do I do? By definition, grad phi means del phi by del x into i cap, etc, etc. So I have to find del phi by del x, del phi by del y, and del phi by del z. So let us find del phi by del x. Del phi by del x means you differentiate this partially with respect to x. That means this will be 1 by 2 root x square plus y square plus z square and differentiate this with respect to x. I'll get 2x. You see y and z are to be treated as constant. So variable is only x. That's what del phi by del x mean. So this kind of derivative I hope you have learned sometime before partial derivatives. Basically treat y and z as constant and differentiate with respect to x. Then you will get root of x squared plus y squared 1 by 2 root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared into derivative of whatever is given here with respect to x which is 2x which is what I have written in the numerator. 2 2 gets cancelled I will get x by root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared that is del phi by del x. Similarly del phi by del y is y by root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. It is the same thing I will get if I differentiate with respect to y I will get 2 root x squared plus y squared plus z squared and numerator I will differentiate with respect to y this uh, whatever is under the root say. So 2, 2 gets cancelled and I will get y by root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Similarly, del phi by del z is z by x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Same, you just differentiate with respect to z. That means treat z as variable x and y as constant. So here I am treating x and y, sorry, x as a variable and y and z as constant. Here I am treating y as a variable, x and z as constant. Here I am treating z as a variable, x and y as constant. So grad phi by definition is del phi by del x i cap plus etc etc. So now I know what is del phi by del x. I just computed it here. So I will substitute all these three in the definition. I will get this horrible looking expression. Uh, problem of the question. The question asked here is find grad phi at 1 comma 0 comma 0. Now I have found grad phi everywhere. At 1 comma 0 comma 0 means at x equal to 1, y equal to 0, z equal to 0. So you know that substitute x equal to 1, see grad phi at 1 comma 0 comma 0 is x equal to 1, y equal to 0, z equal to 0. So you substitute that here, you get y cap. So this is the grad phi, means this is if you take all those physical interpretations,
grad phi at 1, 0, 0 is I cap. That means if you go along I cap, maximum change in phi happens, which is true. You can see the uh, scalar field actually draw it and uh, see it. I will not do those kind of work here in this course. I'm trying to give you these things quickly. So uh, examination point of view, you should know how to differentiate partially with respect to each of the variables. I, K, K appropriately and put them together and substitute whatever value is given. Let us uh, solve one more problem so that we just become more familiar. Rather, we become more conversant with it. Grad phi at 1, 2, minus 1 if phi is given. So phi is given x, y plus y, z plus z, x. I want to find grad phi. So by definition, grad phi is del phi by del x i cap plus del phi by del y j cap plus del phi by del z k cap. So I want to find usual del phi by del x, del phi by del y, del phi by del z. I have written here. Del phi by del x is to differentiate this with respect to x. So y, z are constant. So this, when I differentiate this with respect to x, I will get y. Differentiate this with respect to x, I will get 0 because this is constant. And if I differentiate this with respect to x, I will get z. So differentiate this whole thing with respect to x, I will get y plus z. And that is what I have written here. Similarly, differentiate with respect to y, I will get x plus z. This will be 0. So here is x plus z. To differentiate with respect to z, then this is constant. I will get y plus x. That is the same as x plus y. I return it as y plus x. Uh, x plus y. That's okay. So this is del phi by del x, del phi by del y, del phi by del z. Grad phi is nothing but this. So I substitute these in this. I will get y plus z i plus z x plus z j plus x plus y k. So that means grad phi, I want grad phi at 1, 2, minus 1. Substitute 1, 2, minus 1 in this. x equal to 1, y equal to 2, z equal to minus 1. So here I have done. I hope I have done it correctly. Please check whether if I have not done correctly, you please correct it. Mostly it's correct. Mm, so grad phi at 1, 2, minus 1 is i plus 3k. Now these are all standard questions, so I will go very fast here. Find grad phi of phi is x square y z. This is grad uh, phi. So I want to find grad phi. All you do is del phi by del x, find del phi by del x. So if this is phi x y z, del phi by del x is to differentiate with respect to x. That means keep y and z as constant. So it will be 2 x y z. That's what it is. You differentiate only x square then for del phi by del x. Del phi by del y, x and z are constant. You differentiate with respect to y, you'll get x square z. That's what I have written here. Differentiate this with respect to z. That means x and y are constant. I differentiate with respect to z means it is just x square y. That's what I get. Del phi by del z is x square y. Now substitute all this in this. So I'll get grad phi is 2xyzi x square z j x square y k. Observe this. I have not I told this before, but I'm just uh, emphasizing this grad phi is nothing but a vector field you see at every point it is giving me a vector field at every point it's giving me a vector so it is a vector field so grad phi is a vector field so from a scalar field starting in the scalar field i have now found how to find a vector field means how to associate a vector at every point if you give me a number at every point that is one that number that vector is direction is the number that is the scalar field changing maximum or the other expression it's the normal to other interpretation normal to the uh, surface which, for which phi is constant don't bother let's not bother too much now let us see what i can do with respect to vector field means again here i'm not giving too much of physical interpretation for everything because this is a short course so i'll just give you definitions if you want to see my larger, uh, you know, more extended course on metric calculus, which is given for uh, whatever math, three, whatever, uh, not deep math, but the usual math where they have it in more greater detail, there are given all these physical interpretations. Or at the end of this course, I'll give you a few websites. Check those websites, they'll give you a very nice picture and understanding of all these concepts which I'm telling. So let V, X, Y, Z be a vector field which means it will have i component every point will have a i component z component a j component and a k component so every point is x y z is associated with this vector so this is the i component v1 of x y z 
This is the J component V2 of X, Y, Z. This is the K component V2 of X, Y, Z. This is a vector field. Now I want to talk of divergence of vector field. Divergence, that's what I said. I will not tell you the physical definitions. This is the physical interpretation, but I just tell you this is the definition. Divergence of V is to be thought of as nabla dot V. Remember what is nabla? Nabla is this operator del by del x i cap plus del by del y j cap plus del by del z k cap. So nabla is this, v is this vector field, I'll write here. Just follow the definition, don't worry, don't see the whole slide at one go. Delta dot nabla dot v is divergence, nabla dot v. You can ask me sir, nabla is not a vector, how can you take a dot product? Doesn't matter to me, it's a vector operator. So that means I can, it's like a, like a vector, but not really a vector. So because it has some i into some, something into i plus something into j plus something into k. This is a proper vector field. V1, V2, V3 are all some numbers at every point. So now if I take dot product of these two, that we have already seen, dot of this and this is to multiply i component of this and i component of this plus j component of this plus j into j component of this plus k component of this into k component of this. So that means del by del x into v. Actually it's not a two because it's not a true vector. It is del by del x of v1. v1, v2, v3 are the i, j, k components of v. So del, so I'll get del by del x of v1 plus del by del y of v2 plus del by del z of v3. This is the definition. In fact, if you don't want initially, you can just think of this as the definition. Divergence of v is del v1 by del x plus del v2 by del y plus del v3 by del z. The notation for this using nabla is this. That is how you must look at divergence. And note, del v1 by del x is a number. Del v2 by del y del v2 by del y is a number, del v3 by del z is a number. So this is sum of three numbers, so which is also a number. So at every point, divergence of v will end up as a number, which means a scalar number. So that means you started off with a vector field, I ended up with a scalar field. This is denoted as divergence of v. In the previous case, in the scalar field, I started with a scalar field, that means scalar function. At every point, I ended up with a vector field by taking gradient. Here, it's the other way. I start with a vector field. At every point, I end up with a divergence of field. There's beautiful physical interpretations of it, but I don't think I will tell you about the physical interpretation. You need to know how to calculate this in this course. So let me just restrict myself to that part. Del V1 by del X plus del V2 by del V1, del Y plus del V3 by del Z. This is the definition of divergence. Let us take one example. Find divergence of the vector field defined by V X Y Z is equal to X I plus Y J plus Z. So just uh, what is V1, what, do, what is V2, what is V3? V1 is coefficient of I, V2 is coefficient of Y, J, V3 is coefficient of K. So V1 X Y Z is X, V2 X Y Z is Y, V3 X Y Z is Z. This is a very neat kind of thing. Huh? There are three variables here, but actually here only one of them is showing up. It doesn't depend on Y and Z. So normally it's not this neat. It will look much more ugly, but as a first example, I'm giving you this uh, particular case. As a first case, I'm giving you this example. V1 X comma Y comma Z is X, V2 X comma Y comma Z is Y, V3 X comma Y comma Z is Z. I hope you understood what I did. So divergence of V is nothing but delta V1, del V1 by del X plus del V2 by del Y plus del V3 by del Z. Del V1 by del X means you differentiate this with respect to X, I'll get 1. This is differentiated with this respect to Y, I'll get 1. You differentiate this with respect to Z, I'll get 1. So here it's a constant, 1 plus 1 plus 1 equal to 3. In general, it may not be constant, it may not be a number unless you evaluate it at a point. It may be a function of X, Y, Z. That's okay. Here it is constant, 1 plus 1 plus 1, because here there's nothing else. Uh, maybe it was not a good example to take the first one. I didn't realize this. Let me see other examples. So let us check this. Find divergence of this vector field x square y i plus y square z j plus z square x k. So here v1 is coefficient of i, which is x square y. 
V2 is coefficient of j y square z. V3 is coefficient of k z square x. So now you take del V1 by del x. x square y you differentiate. You get 2x1. You differentiate V2 with respect to y. So x and z are constant, only y is one, so you get 2yz. Similarly here, you differentiate with respect to z, I'll get 2zx. I return all that. Sum of all these things. That is the divergence. That's it. So this is not a constant. This is a number. You see, at various points, you give me a point x, y, z, I can tell you what is the number. For example, 1, 1, 1, 1. It is 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is equal to 6. 1, 2, 3. It's something else. If there are different points, I'll get different values, different scalars. So divergence of V is that various numbers I mean, put together. So divergence of V is a scalar field. So let us check, now complicate our life. Now I know how to find gradient, I know how to find divergence. We put them together, which means I start with the scalar function phi x y z is equal to x cube plus y cube. I start with the scalar function phi x y z is x cube plus y cube plus z cube minus 3 x y z. Question is find divergence of gradient of this. That means first I will find the gradient of this, then I will find divergence of that gradient. How do I find gradient of this? I know the definition. One finds gradient by doing this. If this is phi x y z, find del phi by del x, find del phi by del y, find del phi by del z put them with i, j, k. So when I take del phi by del x, that means I differentiate this with respect to x. I'll get 3x square, this is 0, this is also 0, I'll get minus 3yz. So that's what I written here, 3x square minus 3yz times i. Differentiate this with respect to y, then I'll get 0, 3y square, 0, minus 3xz. That's what I written here, 3y square minus 3xz, marry it off with j. Now, this del phi by del z, so I'll get 0 plus 0 plus 3z square minus 3xy, that's what I written here, marry it off with k, that's the coefficient of k. So i, j, k coefficients are the derivative of this with respect to x, the derivative of this with respect to y, the derivative of this with respect to z, I've done that. So this is grad phi. So this is grad phi, I've written that here. So here, this grad phi, as I pointed out before, it's a vector field. So I have v1, v2, v3. This is the vector field v of x, y, z. So v1, x, y, z is this. That means this is the i component of the vector field. This is the j component of the vector field. This is the k component of the vector field. I return it here, v1, v2, v3. Now what is the divergence of such a vector field? Divergence of grad phi is, if I call this v, del v1 by del x plus del v2 by del y plus del v3 by del z. So I am doing that. You differentiate this with respect to x, I will get 6x. This is 0 because y and z are to be treated as constant when I am differentiating with respect to x. And so I get 6x. Good. Very good. Uh, differentiate this with respect to y. Then x and z are constant so I will get 6y. That's what I have written here. Differentiate this with respect to z, that means I x and y are to be treated constant, so this is constant, so I will get 6z. That's what I have written here. This is divergence of gradient of phi. At any point x, y, z, this is the divergence of gradient. One could ask various questions around this. So please, uh, means you can, uh, one could ask different function is given. One can try to find divergence of gradient. Basically, you first find gradient. And then find divergence of that. That's what we have done here. So here is one more question. Find divergence of this vector field. This vector field is v x y z is y z times i plus z x times j plus x y times k. So that you understand what it means. At every point, I am given a different vector. That's why it's called a vector field. And it's given by this. If you give me various points, I can tell you what are the various vector. Give me any point. Check one of them. One, two, three. So you put y equal to 2, z equal to 3, x equal to 1, and you get some vector. That is what is v. Like that, 
you have a tuffle, you know this, I'm just repeating. Uh, here V1 XYZ is YZ, that is the I component. V1 stands for I component. V2 stands for J component. V3 stands for K component. So I have X com uh, I component V1, J component V2, K component V3. By definition, divergence of V is del V1 by del X. So if you differentiate with respect to X, I get 0 because Y and Z are constant. When I am differentiating with respect to X, I have to treat Y and Z as constant. When I am differentiating with respect to Y, del, del V2 by del Y, Z and X are constant. So this is 0. And similarly, when I am differentiating this with respect to Z, X and Y are constant. So I will get 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. That means divergence is 0 here. There is no divergence. Whatever it means, just as a uh, 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 concept, as a number, you see the divergence is zero here. Zero everywhere, it doesn't matter which point I take. So constant zero vector field is the answer as divergence of this vector field. Uh, there will be special name for this, that is why I am struggling hard. So a vector field is called solenoidal, yeah, I know it's a bad and horrible term if you have done your physics well in your class 10 or class 12 whenever you learned your solenoids or electrical circuits not electricity, electromagnetism and electricity you will have heard solenoid this is actually related to that but till now nobody has taught you that we can't teach you that in this course just just now recall that this is a name it is solenoidal those of you who are interested, just type solenoid in Google and see what it is. Just solenoid, solenoidal beta, just pick solenoid and type in Google and see what it is. It will be related to what we are telling here, but I won't tell you the relation. So vector field is called solenoidal if its divergence is identically zero. For example, in this, this vector field has its divergence equal to zero everywhere. Any point divergence is zero. Such a vector field is called solenoidal. That's the definition. A vector field is solenoidal if its divergence is identically zero. So let us, people could ask you this question in the exam. Like this, show that the vector field defined by this is solenoidal. So you should not get scared of this term solenoidal. Solenoidal just means its divergence is identically zero. Identically zero means zero everywhere. So you have to, all you have to do is to find what is the divergence of this. How do I find divergence of this? Pick up I component, differentiate with respect to X. Pick up J component, differentiate with respect to Y. Pick up K component, differentiate with respect to Z. Let us do that. So which is the I component XY, correct? This is the I component. And this is the J component, 2YZ. And this is the K component, minus Z onto Y plus Z. Now differentiate v1 with respect to x, then I will get y, xy if I differentiate with respect to x, y is to be treated as constant and x, derivative of x is 1, so I will get y. Similarly, derivative of xy, uh, 2yz with respect to y is 2z and derivative of this bad looking function minus zy minus z square with respect to z is minus y minus 2z. So, I found del v1 by del x, del v2 by del y, del v3 by del z. Now you add them up, you will see magically answer is 0. Even though there are x, y, z all over each derivative, when you add them up, it becomes 0. So divergence of v is 0 because this is the definition of divergence, which means my original this vector function, vector field is solenoidal because its divergence is 0. So solenoidal means divergence is identically 0, which is 0 everywhere. Uh, they could ask a twisted question like this, which is I am giving you a vector field. I am not really giving you a vector field because there is a constant term A here, which I don't know what its value is. So x plus 3y i plus y minus 2zj minus x minus azk. So if you take this vector field, that means v1 is this, v2 is this, v3 is this. I know v1 and v2, there are no unknowns here, but v3 has an unknown. I want to find what should be the value of a such that this is solenoidal. So let us break up the problem. Firstly, this is solenoidal. 
and I don't know value of A. Solenoidal means what? Its divergence must be zero. So what is its divergence? Let us try to find it. Must be zero. But what is it in terms of x, y, z, and a? Let us try to find. That means v1 is this much x plus 3y. v2 is y minus 2z. v3 is minus x minus az. Oh, oh. I made a mistake here. Looks like. So because there is a minus here, I seem to have not bothered about it. v3 is minus of x minus az. Let's correct this. Otherwise, this will show up all the time. This is minus. Uh, how do I do that? I seem to have missed that minus. V3 is this. Then, when you differentiate this, V3 becomes plus A, no? So that's the problem. I think I made a mistake here. But anyway, I'm correcting it here. So V1, so let's rewrite this. Let's watch this carefully. Uh, v is given to be this, this, this. So V1 is this, V2 is this, and V3 is this. So I written that correctly. So del V1 by del X is three. I mean, I have to differentiate this with respect to X. So I made a mistake here also. Uh, let's let me correct it. Good, good that I found this now. So differentiate v1 with respect to x. So 3y is constant. So I'll not get 3 here. I'll get 1 here. And this with respect to y. Again, I'll get 1 here. This is correct. This if I differentiate with respect to z, I'll get plus a. This is correct. I mean, now I corrected this. So this is what I get v1 x y z is x plus 3 y v2 x y z is y minus 2 z v3 x y z is minus x minus a z so del v1 by del x is x uh, differential derivative of x plus 3 y with respect to x which is 1 uh, and derivative of v2 with respect to y is again 1 because y there's only y and x and z are constant. Derivative of v3 with respect to z is x and y are constant. So this is constant. This is gone. This is a z. If you differentiate, you get a. Good. Thank you. So 1, 1 and a. That's what it is. So this is wrong. So oh, final answer is correct. No, that is also correct. 1, 1 and plus a it is. Is zero so a is equal to minus 2 is what it should have been i think i made a mistake but i've corrected it here so del v1 by by del x plus del v2 by del y plus del v3 by del z is this is one and this is a oops You must give me this much leeway in my lectures. I could make some computational mistake. You cannot afford to make that in the exam, please. Uh, but I'm correcting it now. So the uh, divergence of V is this plus this plus this, which is 1 plus 1 plus A, which is 2 plus A, which means A is equal to minus 2. So if you put A equal to minus 2 in this, then this will be a solenoidal vector field. Solenoidal means divergence is 0. So what? Let me quickly recall what I have done so that uh, because I made correction in the slides you may get confused. So I am telling you again, V is a vector field given like this. I don't know A, I have to find way A such that V is solenoidal. Solenoidal means its divergence must be zero. So let me try to find divergence of this. So V1 is I component, V2 is J component, V3 is K component. I written down all the three I, J, K components. And then I'll take derivative of v1 with respect to x, v2 with respect to y, v3 with respect to z. Here it is 1 plus 1 plus a. Solenoidal means their sum must be 0. Now that means 1 plus 1 plus a is 0. So a is equal to minus 2 if I solve for a. That's what I want to do. So I found the value of a for which this is solenoidal. That means it's just a word. Solenoidal means divergence is 0. That's all. As simple as that. Now let us go to the next component, next thing. So till now what have we done? V1 
we have started with we have done two things one is gradient another is divergence there are three things which are very important in vector calculus so i want to tell the third one now so let's recall what we did gradient is i start with the scalar field and end up with the vector field start with the scalar field at every point there is a scalar this is a real number i want del phi by del x i plus del phi by del y j plus del phi by del z k that gives me a vector at every point so i ended up with a vector now in divergence what did i do i took a vector field to start with that means at every point i have given vector i will consider its i component j component and k component and i component i'll differentiate with respect to x y component i'll differentiate with respect to uh, y z component i'll differentiate with respect to k component i'll differentiate with respect to z and add them up that is the divergence each one is a real number so final answer is a real number so it's a scalar field so divergence of a vector field is a scalar field gradient of a scalar field is a vector field both i have told in terms of nabla so grad phi is nabla dot phi and uh, divergence of v is nabla dot v both are vectors sort of so now the third one is there where i start with a vector field i want to end up with a vector field so this is called curl this is the most beautiful of all the expressions but again i have no time energy to tell you the physical interpretation of it check out the videos at the end of the lecture which i'll give somewhere in my notes you can see the all the uh, uh, urls i have given please go through them uh, it will give you very beautiful physical interpretation it's very nice uh, so v is some vector field v1 x y z i plus v2 x y z j plus v3 x y z plus k sorry uh, mistake here uh, small typing mistakes please excuse me i will keep correcting as and when i see here but despite that there could be some mistakes please i hope you will correct it so v is v1 x y z i plus v2 x y z j plus v3 x y z k this is a vector field curl by definition is nabla cross v this is the definition nabla cross v remember we talked about cross product of two vectors this is not a genuine vector but doesn't matter curl is also just curl is not a genuine vector but curl of v is a vector so curl is to be thought of as a operation vector operation it will operate on a vector and give another vector what is the vector it will give cross product cross product means i know the definition i know how to evaluate that nabla cross v is i j k and then i write coefficients of nabla and write coefficients of v coefficients means i component j component k component i component j component k component i write a nabla i know is del by del x into i cap plus del by del x into j cap plus del by del z into k cap so i'll write those coefficients of i cap j cap k cap similarly i'll write coefficients of i component of v which is v1 and similarly j component is v2 v, uh, k component is v3 i return all of them so now this is a determinant which is begging to be evaluated that means i cap into the remaining determinant that is del by del y into v3 into means here del by del v3 by del y minus del v2 by del z i cap similarly minus j cap into del v3 by del x minus del z by del del v1 by del z z i written here j cap plus k cap into del v2 by del x minus del v1 by del y i have written it here so this is a vector so i started with the vector field ended up with a vector field this is called curl curl means something is rotating something curl you know curl so this is curl suli uh, in kannada so it's like actually that it will tell lots of that's why i said this is a very beautiful physical interpretation uh, i don't have time energy to do it in this course so but for you for examination point of view you need to know how to evaluate this given v1 v, v which means given v1 v2 v3 you should know how to evaluate this determinant it's the boring part but that's what is there in your exam so let us look at some examples v x y z be this particular vector field zi 
plus xj plus yk be a vector field in a region find its curl so let us find its curl just straightforward definition curl v is nabla cross v so nabla cross v how do i evaluate this ijk right as it is nabla coefficient is del by del x del by y y del by del z and coefficients of v is given here zx y so i written here zx y now evaluate this i into this into this minus this into this so that is del y by del y minus del x by del z minus j cap into del y by del x minus del z by del z that's what i written here plus k cap into del x by del x minus del z by del y i hope i have done it correctly but del y by del y is one this is zero del x by del z is zero because if i'm differentiating with respect to z i have to treat x as constant so del x by del z is zero so i'll get one here and here i'll get minus one but there's already minus here so these two will become plus and this here i'll get one and this is zero so this is k it looks like it's correct so i plus j plus k is a, is the curl of this vector field note this is a constant curl it has curl is constant everywhere in general it need not be like that that means here i component j component and k component of curls are same everywhere it is one 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 but in general it may have x and y and z it may vary let's see if i have given some example like that yeah looks like there is one like that find curl of this vector field this is pretty bad looking but still there is symmetry x square y z i cap plus x y square z j cap plus x y z square k cap uh, if you want to compute curl of this, do the same thing. Find out what is V1, what is V2, what is V3. That is co component of I, component of J, component of K. They are V1, V2, V3. Curl of V by definition is nabla cross V, which is, I evaluate like this, I, J, K. Nabla is coefficients are written here. V coefficients are written here. So I carry out this computation. Here is the computation. It looks ugly but I can't help it. It's done to ugly. It's quite symmetric, but it's a long competition. You have to do it. I into this into this minus this into this. So that is del by del y of x, y, z square. I return it here. Similarly, minus del by del z of x, y square z. I return it here. Similarly, the other uh, terms and if you evaluate, you will get this horrible looking expression. It's not horrible, actually, it's quite symmetric. X, Z square minus Y square, I cap, plus Y, Z square minus X square, Z cap, plus Z into Y square minus X square, K cap. It's quite beautiful. Mm, uh, but yeah, it's a longish kind of thing. Uh, that's okay. So this is curl. Here, you see, it's not constant. At different points, if you change X, Y, Z, you'll get different uh, vectors at every point. So curl is dependent on the point in the previous example it was dependent it was not dependent it was just constant everywhere so here it is not constant let us see one more example of a curl curl of this vector field this looks uh, it's not symmetric at all 4xy minus z cube plus i cap plus 2x square j cap minus 3xz square k cap these are the three components of the vector field uh, at a vector at any point uh, so, V1, V2, V3, that's the first step to do. And moment they give vector field, just write V1, V2, V3. So, V1 is 4xy minus z cube, V2 is 2x square, V3 is minus 3xz square. Now, if I want to find curl, do this. I know the definition. Ijk, evaluate this determinant with Ijk as the first row, del, uh, coefficients of nabla as the second row, del by del x, del by del y, del by del z. Coefficients of V in the third row, V1, V2, V3. Uh, just I know I found V1, V2, V3, substitute it here. I hope I have done it correctly. Uh, I will not waste time here now on doing this. So I hope I have done it correctly. Please, if I have made, I know, most probably I have not made a mistake because answer is what I want. So here, curl happens to be zero. You please verify, go through these steps carefully. How oh, this into this, into this, minus this into this. That turns out to be some zero and then all these things are written the details here you please go through that and make sure answer here it says curl v is zero like you remember we got some vector field for which divergence of v is zero identically zero everywhere here curl of v is identically zero everywhere so everywhere it is zero again there is a separate name for it 
curl is zero means curling is zero that means no rotation in some sense no curling it's all straight so curl no curl means uh, technical term for that is irrotational no rotation i have not explained what rotation and things like that but it's okay this is the term they use in the exam prove somebody is irrotational means you have to show that guy is has no curl curl is zero so vector field in the previous example is irrotational that means this uh, example what we saw this vector field is irrotational how do i know that because i have to compute curl that's all and show that it is equal to zero let us try to see one more ah so this is another question similar question similar to what you did for solar model find constants a b c such that this vector field is irrotational so they have given a b c a b c in the expression but i don't know the value of a b c i want to find such that this is irrotational means its curl must be zero so let's try to find its curl in terms of a b c uh, so usual v1 is x plus y plus a z v2 is bx plus 2y minus z and uh, v3 is x plus cy plus 2z so these are the uh, three components of uh, v so i want to find curl of v which is nabla cross v which is usual definition of the determinant usual definition of cross product in terms of determinant so i hope i have done it correctly you can go home and check uh, i'll get this c minus 1 times i cap plus minus 1 minus a j cap plus b minus 1 k cap now i want to verify this is correct most probably this is correct what i want here is I want you to find constants A, B, C such that curl is 0. Now I have found that curl is this. Now this must be 0. When will this be 0? This is 0 and C equal to 1, A equal to 1 and B equal to 1. So A, B, C must be equal to 1. So that means curl V is 0 means this vector is 0. Every point. Anyway, this is dependent only on A, B, C. There is no X, Y, Z here. So C, A, A, B, C are all equal to 1. That is when the original vector field is uh, irrotational uh, i think i'll stop here for this class uh, uh, we will continue with this course in the next class thank you